welcome to BBC News School Report 2013. We are reporting from Cardinal Newman Catholic School in Hove. Our first report today is from a group of Year 9 students in our school who have been talking about what it is like to be 13 in 2013. Emily, what is it like to be 13 in 2013? In many ways, I think that being 13 now is quite difficult to be a young person in the UK because since I can remember, all that has been talked about in the economic world has been recessions, credit crunches, benefit cuts, repossessions, tax inflation and expensive university fees. Ben, what do you think? I think that because we've introduced to new technology, it means that it could help children learn and help parents be able to know where, what their children are doing and where they are such as Twitter, which children tweet what they're doing to their friends. Thank you. Eleanor, what matters to you? The things that matter to me are my family, my friends, my possessions, money, my house and my life. This has changed as when I was younger, I only thought about toys and playing games. Now I'm older, I think about my future, a future job and GCSEs. Ben, what hopes do you have for the future? My hopes for the future are to make the world a more eco-friendly place and a better place to live in the world. Sam, is being 13 now different to when your parents or grandparents were 13? Yes, as technology has been introduced and has changed a lot since our grandparents were 13. For instance, children have become less active and obesity has risen. We have also become less sociable as we have not been out as much as they had. 30.3% of children aged 2 to 15 were overweight or obese in 2010. This has probably risen since then. On the other hand, we have more responsibilities at being 13 than they used to have. This is BBC News School Report from Sam, Ella, Ben, Emily, Ben and Sam. Our next story is about today's news on moving issues that have come to light today about adoption in Australia from many years ago. On the news today, two women spoke out about the awful way in which they were forced to give up their babies just because they were unmarried and teenagers. Monica Jones, the first woman, explained about how the hospital pressurised her into putting up her two babies for adoption. To this day, she is still devastated about it and feels that she could have just been good to her mother as those adopted babies than she was to the three others she actually raised. And Maury Melville is like so many other poor women who were forced into this dreadful system. She is still very bitter and angry with their policies. Maureen thought it an outrage that any baby should be born unto adopted parents. However, we now all know that it is too late to change what happened. Forty years on, and the mothers are still recoiling from cruel circumstances. This is Bella, Marie, Lucia, Lottie and Max reporting from BBC News School Report. For our next story, we will be looking at the issue that is global poverty. A 40-year-old Bulgarian man is the sixth person to set himself on fire in a month. He took this drastic move in protest over the fact that he could no longer afford to feed his only child. Our researcher, Amalia, has looked into the welfare system of Bulgaria. We now go to Amalia to tell us what she has discovered. In Bulgaria, there are unemployment benefits and child benefits and allowances but there is a national health insurance fund, like many Western countries. However, we did not uncover any evidence of any food banks that could be used by people in need of food. This could be a problem, as it means that some people in need will go hungry. We also know from the drastic actions taken by six people in the last month, many of the benefit laws in Bulgaria are being neglected. An estimated 1.3 billion people were thought to have been living in poverty in 2008. However, the figure is thought to have increased. England is lucky enough to have a strongly enforced benefit system ensuring no one starves in this country. This is Dasha, Izzy, Amalia and Connor reporting, reporting for BBC, BBC News School, School, School Report. For our next story we go to budget cuts. Britain faces embarrassment to its credit rating up after this last decade. George Osborne admits it's not looking good. He said that the economic growth in 2013 would be 0.6%, half of the 1.2% predicted four months ago. To fix the economy, the government planned to cut some of the things they spend on for big building projects, like new roads to kickstart the economy. 
However, Ed Miliband says that George Osborne has not changed anything in the last three years. This is Tom, Chad, Imogen, Nave, reporting for BBC News School Report. For our next story, we are reporting on Pope Francis I. As we are a Catholic school, the election is very important to us. The new, the new Pope was elected on the 13th of March 2013, born in Argentina on the 17th of December 1936. Of the Italian descent, he is now 30, 76 years old. Francis, the 266th Pope, is the first non-European Pope in over a thousand years. He is also the first Latin American to lead the Roman Catholic Church. He became a bishop in 1992 before moving on to Archbishop in 1998. He then succeeded in becoming a cardinal in 2001. We are now going to ask Xanthi, one of our Year 8 students, what she thinks. So Xanthi, what are your views on the new Pope? Well, I have heard Pope Francis actually lives in a simple flat in the building of Archdiocese. His humble lifestyle is very admirable and proves that he is a down-to-earth person. Thank you for listening. This was Guanya, Santhi, Delphi and Alex reporting from BBC News School Report. Thanks for listening. We have been reporting from Cardinal Newman Catholic School in Hove.